We're back. Mike Cernovich, Cernovich.com. A little blurry, either that or my vision's blurred. I'm, I am wearing makeup, if you wonder if you wonder why I look more youthful than usual. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the RNC last night. The uh, RNC last night, the ratings game being played, and then the riots, and then a CBS poll that I just tweeted out. I retweeted Glenn Grenwald. So according to a CBS poll, only 5% of voters are going to vote for Biden, or rather only 5% of Republican voters are going to vote for Joe Biden. And it was like 7% for Hillary, 8% Obama. The media, they're really panicking. Last night, ha- how's Modafinil? What's that got to do with the stream, bro? What's that got to do with the stream? I've written about Modafinil, done podcasts on it. So the question is that the media is panicking and they had to settle on a narrative. The narrative is now rating. Right. So last night I watched all the media bros and girls flail around cocaine, Kimberly screaming. They just had nothing. They had nothing. So now they have to settle in on, oh, the ratings are bad. And then they use the network network ratings of CBS, ABC, NBC. What are you talking about? So that's a pretty funny game that they play. This is how they fact check you. They're trying to fact check me right now because I said the RNC blew away. Um, the DNC, which it did by C-SPAN metrics, but now they're going, well, according to ABC, CBS, I've had more people watch a Periscope than these shows get a lot of times, but the live streams are what they won't talk about, right? The live stream are what they won't talk about. We all know how the live streams look last night versus the DNC. So now they're running, now they're running afraid. There's a guy, um, he works for Brookings, but he's actually not a bad guy. I uh, forget his name. He's Egyptian. He works for Brookings, Brookings, and he's not like a scumbag lefty. But he said last night that the watching the RNC made him nervous. I follow his stuff. He's a pretty reasonable guy. I like his stuff a lot, actually. I've retweeted him a lot. And if you're a normal person and you watched the RNC last night and you don't want Trump to win, <laughs> you are nervous. If you are not just some scumbag, total piece of shit, far left wing Antifa freak show, and you watched the RNC last night, and you want Trump to lose, you had diarrhea today. You had indigestion. You had loose stools because the nerves kicked in, and you saw that the Democrats offer nothing. I had a friend of mine, I won't say his name because it was had in confidence. So please don't guess, just be respectful. But I'll just say a very high profile person called me last night and said, so, you know, you got your finger on the pulse. Who do you think wins it? And I said, well, a month ago, I said, I thought it was Biden. And I think Trump's going to win. And he goes, yep. This is somebody who goes on TV, you know, hates Trump, that kind of, he goes, he goes, we don't have a message. So when you watch the RNC, there is a message. It was optimistic. It was inclusive. It was so well done. The production was better. At every level, it was better. The RNC was. I'm blocking anybody who guessed. I said, don't guess the name out of respect. Why can't you be respectful? And then those people will then email me, why did you block me? I even say, be respectful. Don't guess names. I I don't want to reveal confidence. And then they do that, and then I block them. You're just not a respectful person. Be respectful of people and their boundaries. So people are so panicking now because the DNC is all about the riots, contrasting the RNC and the aspiration, the vision with the DNC rioting now. The black life, we have moral clarity. We had such moral clarity now. There's never been more, more, any more moral clarity in the history of my life. You are voting for riots or are you voting for inclusivity? You're, the, the RNC was a love fest. You notice how when the RNC speaker list came out, a lot of our people kind of bitched. And I was like, hey, you know, it's a pretty good list. Last night proved that. You know, this, and this is the problem, too. You know how you become irrelevant? And this is why a lot of MAGA people are irrelevant. You know how you become irrelevant? You just fucking complain about everything. Oh, the, the, you just complain. And then when people do good things, you don't ever say, good win. This was a good thing here. Carrot and stick. 
Some of you are such antisocial freak shows that all you and you complain to me and all you do is complain. But when it's good, you don't praise them. We know Nikki Haley was a dud. Good. Nikki Haley opened for Don Jr. And you got to watch Nikki Haley and then you got to watch Don Jr. If I'm Don Jr., I'm happy about that. If I'm a populist, I'm happy that Nikki Haley got to go on before Don Jr. And then everyone could be like, oh, wow, what's the future of the party? Nikki Haley? <laughs> right. So you should be happy about that because Nikki Haley got to have an audition right before. That, that's the worst time slot, by the way, too. I, I wouldn't have wanted to open for Don Jr. Right. You're setting yourself up for failure. So that was actually setting Nikki Haley up for failure was putting her right before Don Jr. And then people go, oh, wow, Nikki is what a joke. Right. So I'm glad she spoke. I'm glad people got to see the real deal versus the complete joke, the past. It was like carrying on the torch. So the RNC was great. They, my wife's brown. Nice try. You hate Nikki Haley because she's brown. That'd be news to my very Persian wife. Um, so the, the narrative went from last night, they didn't have anything, to cocaine, oh, cocaine, they're doing cocaine. Kimberly Guilfoyle really yelled, oh my God, she yelled in the room. <laughs> that, and that shows you how dumb reporters are. They're so dumb that they can't even come with the message and, until they're told what to say. Coke, they flail around. Like Julie Ioff has a, a, a GQ column, and the best she could do is, oh, cocaine. <laughs> Charlie Rizal, the best thing he could do is put a picture of Kimberly Guilfoyle in a misogynistic attack on a strong, powerful woman. That's the best the New York Times could bring, is to attack a woman for what? For, for screaming? I scream. You scream, we all scream for ice cream. But that's how dumb these people are. They don't even know what to say until they're given their talking points by their little, you know, their little puppet masters. And then they try to go, oh, it was dark. But then that's racist. They're calling Senator Tim Scott dark. How is that not racist? So Jake Tapper and other people made racist attacks on black speakers. Oh, they said it was too dark. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? So Democrats have a problem with the RNC being too dark on a night that there are multiple African-American speakers. Very, very interesting. So then they realize, oh, shit, um, we just showed how racist we were. We better be careful. Now they're going with, oh, the ratings was bad. The ratings was bad. The, ra the ratings were amazing. But, they, but, you, but you see, that's how they play the little games. They go from, well, I mean, C-SPAN, the ratings were six times higher for Republicans. We're not going to count C-SPAN. We'll only count ABC, CBS, NBC. Who in the hell watches CBS? Right? Who in the hell watches CBS? You, you go look on YouTube. The, the more people watch it on YouTube. Nobody does that. So they're like, well, C-SPAN shows the ratings were like huge. Now we'll just pick some network that I don't even know if it exists anymore. And we'll do that. So complete joke. And then, of course, the riots happen, and now they're really scrambling. So if I were a Democrat right now, I would be nervous. And you can tell they're nervous because Jake Tapper, fake Jake, tried to claim that Don Jr. wanted to protect Confederate statues in a speech. Right? Right? Isn't that amazing? Don Jr. never mentioned Confederate monuments, but they're just like, what do we say? How do we attack him? Oh, yeah, Confederate statues. So then they have to make it up. And then they wanted to say, well, the Wuhan virus didn't come from communist China. So if I were, you don't want to ever get cocky, obviously. But if I were the RNC people, I'd be feeling pretty good. You don't pop the champagne. You know, you got a couple more days. Don't pop the champagne just yet. But if I were the RNC people and the Trump people and the production was that, and all the media has to do is to, to make up ratings and make up stuff people didn't even say and talk about cocaine. I would feel pretty good, man. I would feel more than pretty good. I would feel like nine out of 10. Who is the guy from Cuba? Everybody said he was their favorite speech. I'm terrible with names. Everybody who knows me knows I can never remember names. There was a person who talked about socialism. He was like the breakthrough speaker. When I tweeted out, who is your favorite? Uh, when I tweeted out, who is your favorite 
speaker, Maximo. Yeah, everybody was like Maximo Maximus. Everybody loved Maximus. So I think he was by far the breakthrough speaker of the night. Um, everybody was like, we love him. So whether, so he, he was definitely like the breakthrough of Maximo. He, yeah, he was the breakthrough. So big night for the RNC. The riots are just going to keep happening. The silent majority. We call them the silenced majority. I didn't, Julius, where? I didn't make that up, by the way. Someone else who, who watches the Periscope did. It isn't the silence. It isn't the silent majority. It is the silenced majority. You understand the difference? So the silent majority is an old kind of not really the sign of the times. The silenced majority are the people who have to just be quiet while their stores are destroyed, while they can't go to church. They can't talk about who they, they are silenced. They're not silent. They want to speak out, but they can't because their whole life would be destroyed. They could be murdered by Antifa. The media will try to smear them. The media will dox them. The media will try to make it so their lives are terrible. The media will target them. They're the silenced majority. And that really is what's coming out. I don't know if you've been following Elijah's stuff. Heartbreaking stories about people losing their businesses overnight. Heartbreaking. That is the left. If you want the left, if you want riots, if you want destruction, it's clear. You know what I like? I like moral clarity. Because if Joe Biden wins, you know how much sympathy I'll have for the country? You know how much sympathy I'll have for the country if Joe Biden wins? None. Zero. Why? Because that's who we wanted. You know how much sympathy I have for people in New York? None. Zero. Why? They voted 92% Hillary. They voted 92 How can I have sympathy? That's just like if a guy marries a woman, you're like, don't marry her, dude. You're going to ruin your life. And then the guy's life is ruined. You're like, oh, I can't. I'm so, I don't feel sorry, right? The choices. So I feel no sympathy for New York, New Yorkers. I feel no sympathy for Democrat run areas that are facing devastation and destruction. This is your vote. This is what you're voting for. You're voting for riots. You're voting for looting. You're voting for disarming people. You're voting to close churches. You're voting to defund the police. You're voting for terrorism. If that's what you vote for, honey. I hope you get it, and I hope you get what you vote for. As H.L. Mencken said, good and hard. So Democrats, they are getting what they voted for, and they're getting it good and hard. And I'm supposed to what? Feel bad? Feel, quit asking me about California. That's such a tedious question. Don't worry about where I choose to live. Worry about where you live. I get asked that question multiple times a day. Worry about where you live. And that's what people are doing. They're getting what they voted for, right? You ever hear me complain about California taxes? No, that's personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. So you vote 92% Democrat. By the way, someone said this. I don't know if it's true, but it's plausible. Joe Biden is running abs in New York. That's how bad it is. Joe Biden has to run in. Joe Biden has to run in ads in states that should be a landslide for him. By the way, some people want to see Julius. How you doing, Julius? How you doing, little guy? You doing okay? You doing okay? Julius is a little upset because it's a heat wave. So I'll die if I go for a walk right now. We'll die in the heat. And then at night, the coyotes come out. So I should probably get up early. Maybe, I guess, the solution. At night, coyotes come out. and Like real coyotes. I mean, and they have traps and stuff they set. And then afternoon, it's like dying. Anyhow, big night for the RNC last night. We'll see if tonight. I don't know. I don't check the schedule, but we'll figure it out. I don't know. I don't know when Rick Grinnell speaks. Anyway, big night for the RNC. Tonight, we'll see if it follows through. Democrats, they're going to riot their way to a Trump re-election. Ooh, that's good. Demo Here's my new slogan. Democrats rioting their way to Trump 2020. Okay, I got to sign off. I got to tweet that out. Democrats riding their way to Trump 2020. Talk to you soon.